P3D video three focuses on peak flow by the rational method Q equals CIA and deals with channel segmentation since that can factor into travel time. Now we went into Dynamic CAD and dropped into P3D earlier and did the lightning bolt calculation based on the 50 year storm any year selected and got these perimeters for the various detected watersheds. Now on this particular watershed it has an area as you can see on the right of 15.877 that is the A and the C factor is shown as 0 0.384 it's the composite of runoff from the asphalt from the generic ground etc. Now if you knew that this area here had a low runoff due to um, deep forest, I could make a perimeter around it, see to close using that option, and then you can drag and drop a known low runoff coefficient texture. Let's pause. When we rerun the storm event, the runoff coefficient has been reduced to 0 0.361. Move your cursor into the uh, forested area and look at the bottom right the runoff coefficient for that texture is 0 0.18. That pulled the composite runoff coefficient down. But let's use Google Maps to get even more accurate. We can re reference our tin and uh, download. Let's pause a second. This works if under Tools Projection you have the correct projection set here. Now we've downloaded it and we can come in and draw a polyline around this. We're going to pause once more. We placed a 0.9 runoff coefficient paving on this area here. Now the runoff coefficient average is 0.426. It's risen. Now, if you want to get rid of the um, overlay, you go to the tin, select textures, come at the bottom here, click off your map overlay, and we're, we're back. Now, the last thing is to take a look at the... I factor. That's based on the longest flow line in all cases. And if we come in and look at this, you can see there's contributions to the time of travel from the sheet flow, shallow flow, and each channel segment. Now we have five of them. And I'll look at one that's kind of interesting. Uh, this one here, where it flows over a very flat area. This is channel segment two and has a 0.09% slope. And grass lining works based on the flatness of the slope. And it contributes, as you can see here, um, to the, the TC. It contributes almost a minute, six tenths of a minute. But as it drops over, number three, which has a two to one slope, it needs a riprap channel liner class four because of the shear force. And its contribution is a mere 0.012 minutes because of the speed of the flow there. They all add up to the total time of concentration. And that, if you look to the right, is 20 minutes. So if you go to your table um, under the selection here, use the same storm, edit it. You can see the 20 minutes is between uh, 15 and 20. We're going to be between 5.7 and 4 for the all-important I, the inches per hour. And sure enough, if you look over to the right, it is 4.909. That's where the I came from. Let's pause. Now a quick review of settings. We have four methods of calculating uh, time of concentration. They all involve length of flow, and uh, you can see them here. We have presettings for the sheet flow length and shallow flow length to use. You can change those. You can set up the number of channel segments. It'll best fit five in this case or do it by vertical offset. And you can also uh, set down here how the watersheds are calculated. You can use the gate to place a gate anywhere you want and calculate a localized uh, watershed for a particular culvert there. And last but not least, you can join watersheds with this option, joining this one to this one for a larger peak flow. 